Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Today is October 7th, 2020. I'm your host, Arusha Paris, and today we have Ken Shreve on the show. Ken is one of the senior market writers for IBD. He's on the leaderboard team, and he is also on IBD Live. Thanks for being here, Ken. Hey, my pleasure, Arush, uh, Arusha. Great to be with you. On today's podcast, we are going to talk about the current markets. We will talk about the importance of focusing on the new in stocks, and we will end the episode with a few current stocks. Let's get back into the current market, and we are back in an uptrend, and we have one distribution day on the NASDAQ and S&P from yesterday. Uh, Ken, what are your thoughts on this market? I will pull up a market chart, and I think maybe the first thing that we should do is let's talk about that follow-through day that was called last week. Uh, because it was it was a little bit on the egg, just surprised some people because we used the Dow uh, to call it. But let's go over some of that reasoning because sometimes they're not crystal clear. But we have to we have to lean one way uh, because we don't want to miss out on a rally. Yeah, exactly. I think that was the that was the point uh, on uh, September 30th when we saw that 1.2 percent gain in the Dow. It was, uh, um, you know, it was a little bit on the fence because on that day the you know the the market had uh, sold off and indexes had had you know come come in off their highs, including the Dow, which pretty much closed right in the middle uh, half of its range. But you know, nonetheless, the 1.2 percent gain uh, qualified as a as a follow through day. It was the only index that that followed through and uh, and that is still the the case now we're still waiting for a follow through for the nasdaq and the s p 500 we don't have to get it we're in a confirmed uptrend and uh, as we've been talking about on uh, ibd live uh, for several days now the uh, the market internals you know the advanced decline line on the nasdaq has started to swing higher again and there sure are uh, as you know arusha a lot of great looking uh, charts out there yeah, it, it, and I, I think in, in, in many ways, that is the most important thing. How are the leading stocks doing? And, yeah. and even before the fall through day, it just seemed like that week, some of these leading stocks, they were starting to act a little bit better. They were starting to build the, the right-hand sides of bases. And so when it was right on the edge, and, and it, it was almost pretty comical because it's like, okay, the, it, I think it was like maybe like 15 minutes before the close, the, if you're going to use the Dow, it's going to easily cross 1.2. And yeah. then right at the end, it crossed. It, it finished exactly at 1.2. And I remember yeah. you guys are all in a heated debate on what to do. Well, you know, listen, and it was Chris, uh, you know, Chris uh, Gessel, our esteemed leader, who, uh, you know, really said, you know, we really just need to think about, you know, what, what would Bill O'Neill himself have done in a, in a situation like this, and the answer to that would have been, you know, pretty pretty clear. He would have called the uh, the, the follow through day. All you need is uh, is one index. Now earlier this year, after you know that that really sharp uh, pullback that took us down to to the lows in March, we actually had all four indexes follow through. It was the Russell 2000 that followed through first, and then on April 2nd, it was the uh, the S and P 500, and then on um, uh, April 6, it was the NASDAQ and the Dow. So yeah. it's always good to see, you know, follow through with conviction. We didn't get it, you know, this last time on September 30th. But what trumps that is, like you said, the action in uh, individual stocks. And it seems like every screen that you uh, run, uh, there's just, you know, stocks either finding support at their 10-week their moving average for the first time after a breakout, maybe for the second time. Still a lot of bases uh, uh, forming out there. So uh, market internals look good. And there's a lot of worries about the economy and what happens if we don't get another round of uh, stimulus. But, uh, you know, things are things are looking pretty good. I think it's too early to get uh, too bearish on this uh, market. Yeah, no, I agree. And and, and also regarding with the, the news, everyone's worried about the, the stimulus, which obviously is a very, very important piece of news. Uh, you you want to be careful about letting the news tell you what to do. You want to let the market tell you what to do. You want to let the leading stocks tell you what to do. And even yesterday when we got hit, really hard and I'll, I'll switch over to the nasdaq right now um you know, you know things were acting really well and probably what maybe an hour and a half before the close all of a sudden a tweet came out and the market's really sold off uh, one, one thing that i personally did is i just immediately switched to weekly charts to try to reduce that panic 
that that I'm sometimes well, very vulnerable at getting. Yeah, uh, I, I do that all the time myself too, because weekly charts have a very good way of calming calming you down. And when your stock is down two or three percent one day, and you look at the weekly chart, it's very smooth and nothing nothing really wrong. So I totally agree with that uh, with that strategy. Yeah, and and so. Um, so, so that's that's the big thing. You you really want to just kind of make sure it's obvious that okay, we we could be going back into correction, or or whatnot. And I, I think another thing, also to to write to take note of is even during uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, even though we were in a correction, all of a sudden a lot of these leading stocks stopped acting like they were in a correction, and yeah. and so that was kind of that earlier uh, kind of heads up or tell that the, the market maybe might be coming around here. So so let's wait and see on that. Now, uh, Ken, the, one thing that's pretty interesting with this market is there are a number of industry groups uh, that, you know, besides tech, that are doing well. Uh, you know, wh why don't you walk us through some of these other, uh, uh, other sections of the economy or other sectors of the economy that are actually uh, starting to do pretty well uh, in this environment. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a great point. I mean, listen, if you if you pay too much attention to the headlines uh, on the financial news networks, you know, I mean, you're going to very easily be worried about this uh, e economy. And, uh, you know, it is uh, is uh, the turnaround uh, in, in jeopardy without uh, without stimulus. But, you know, the bottom line is that outside of technology, there are, you know, it, it's been a broad based uh, rally. And uh, listen, the, the retail sector, a lot of retail subgroups in our, our database. I mean, it's just been incredible. Uh, uh, to see these uh, retailers uh, outperform, I've been, uh, you know, I really like to follow the the, the transports. You know, the Dow Dow Jones uh, transportation average, which is uh, hitting uh, hitting new highs. Of course, uh, the home builders. Uh, you know, three areas of the economy. I mean, listen, the, the, these uh, stocks in these uh, sectors and industry groups would not be outperforming like they are um, if uh, if 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 there were a lot of questions about fundamentals. You know, but the the fact Fact that the, the home builders uh, are, are are doing very well, still very strong uh, technically. Uh, the the IYT, which is a, a great uh, transportation uh, ETF, uh, that is technically very strong. And like I said, the retailer. So the you know you can you can you can listen to the headlines about an economy that may not be all that healthy, but you can look at it, you know sections of the economy like this: the home builders, the transports, uh, the retailers. Uh, they're actually flagging uh, what what could be a pretty decent 2021, uh, you know, uh, economic wise. Yeah. And, and with any kind of major kind of event, like what we've been going through for most of this year, there are always going to be winners and losers, whatever companies are just in the right place at the right time, or they're able to adapt uh, pretty well. And with, even within the, the retail uh, sector, you have, you have a lot of winners and losers, the ones who have been able to adapt and, uh, have a good e-commerce uh, play or a, a e-commerce uh, operation, they've been able to just quickly adjust and and ship their products uh, through online orders versus those who were uh, really dependent on just uh, being being there in uh, mainstream and, and just being able to be on the retail brick and mortar type of sales. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty incredible what Target has done, for example. I mean, has, has totally reinvented themselves and the results are, you know, showing up big time in the in the bottom line and uh, and, and top line uh, growth. So a lot of uh, retailers have adapted. It's funny, the one disappointment in the retail sector is one of the, the you know, best performing stocks in recent years, Lululemon. That yeah. one's been a little bit of a disappointment, uh, kind of broke below its 50-day moving average after uh, reporting our earnings. But, you know, outside of Lulu, really the, the, the positives uh, really outweigh the, the, the negatives. It's just broad-based leadership uh, uh, across a variety of uh, retail-related groups. Yeah, and I just pulled up the, the chart of uh, Lulu here. And yeah, and, and you can see when, when they reported earnings or the gap down below the 50s. So that's when uh, a lot of times we're we're not going to play around too much if we don't we have a big cushion on the stock. We'll usually get out, let let the stock prove itself again. Now it could be setting up to get back above that 50-day moving average, and it may give that chance to to get in. Now another thing that they did in the last quarter that was uh, pretty interesting was they acquired the that company Mirror right. with the Connected Fitness. So they're trying to get more into the Connected Fitness. 
Um, and so we'll see what's going on there. Any thoughts on, on that, that industry? Well, that I, new I, trend? It, I remember that the market actually responded pretty well to news of that uh, acquisition. It wasn't a small price tag. I mean, they shelled out $500 million for, uh, for mirror and, uh, you know, the market's response. Sometimes when a company makes an acquisition, uh, like that, you know, you yeah. can see, you know, selling pressure in the acquiring, uh, uh, company, but that wasn't the case with, uh, Lulu. It, you know, continued to, to hit new highs. I was a bit surprised by the market's uh, response to the uh, earnings report. It, I mean, it wasn't a bad report uh, uh, by any means. And I think uh, I think there are reasons for optimism that Lulu is going to be able to integrate this uh, mirror acquisition. It's already uh, closed. It, it closed uh, very quickly. And uh, so we'll see. I mean, it's getting a little bit of resistance here at the 50-day moving average. But, uh, uh, you know, it also it could, could have bottomed and uh, could just be forming the right side of a, a base here. So I haven't completely given up on Lululemon yet. But it's not, uh, you know, going to let let this base out. And uh, meanwhile, looking at a lot of other, you know, great, you know, retail stocks like like a Target, for example. Yeah, no, and, and I'll, I'll quickly pull up Target here just to, to show you Target. Is, I mean, the, the market is really rewarding Target. It re- broke out of a flat base a week and a half ago or so. It had on its report, earnings report, it had a massive earnings gap up, consolidated while the market kind of pulled in. It did everything. It's actually perfect. And yes. now it's uh, slowly moving higher. Um, and obviously with, with Target, the, all the online pickup, you can just drive in the, the, the curbside pickup and things like that uh, has, has really helped, uh, helped them and, and impressed Wall Street uh, with what they're doing. Yes. Now, uh, Ken, uh, let's go to, to end this uh, part of the, the episode. Let's go into a little bit of your background because uh, now for those... Those of you who might might know, I mean, I was a longtime customer of Investor Business Daily, and I'd read the paper and I'd watch the, the videos and, and things like that. And, and Ken was one of the stars, and and still is one of the stars. I I, I kind of look at you as one of the original gangsters of uh, IBD, uh, and I learned tons uh, from you uh, way back then. Uh, you know, go into a little bit of the background of, uh, of uh, your time at IBD and, and some of the things that you learned, and we'll continue that even more in the next segment. Well, I mean, to hear that you were a subscriber at one point and, and watching my uh, videos when I was doing them, doing them by myself in my uh, office, it makes me feel a little bit old. But uh, it does uh, it does underscore the uh, the fact that uh, I've been I've been with this company a, a long time. Uh, I feel obviously blessed to uh, have been here and worked with uh, with Bill O'Neill and to develop a, a knowledge of investing and be able to share that knowledge with uh, many, 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 many people over the years. But uh, yeah, I first I first came to IBD back in the late 90s, right in the in the uh, in the middle of this, uh, you know, raging uh, bull Perfect market. Time. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was around 98, uh, 98, 99. And uh, I actually started uh, at IBD in the uh, in, in the ad ad sales uh, area. Okay. On a on a uh, sort of a, a temporary basis, I just moved out to California. I was starting a, a new uh, new life with uh, with uh, with my uh, wife at the time, and uh, and then uh, you know then I, I went to to customer service, and then it became known that I, I knew how to write, and I'd done some uh, golf writing uh, for the PGA Tour, and oh, wow. and, and people uh, you know would uh, uh, knew about that, and then I started writing for the, uh, the the paper. I was given opportunities to go out and speak at uh, at, at meetup. Uh, Groups and uh, uh, really just uh, in, enjoyed uh, all of that. So I've had a, a tremendous amount of uh, experiences uh, over the years. I did uh, I did have a little uh, hiccup in uh, I think it was like 2007 2008. One of my uh, guys I respect a lot in the in the stock market, uh, Jim Kramer over at CNBC. He uh, he uh, uh, you know hired me, asked me to come over to, to the street and, and, and write a newsletter. And I did that for almost uh, three years, but, uh, you know, eventually ended up at, uh, at, uh, at IBD, came back to the company in 2013 and just, uh, you know, really appreciative of all the uh, experiences I've, I've had to, to teach and, uh, and uh, to do something that, you know, listen, all of us that are working here now have a, have a passion for the, for the market and, uh, and have a passion for teaching and, and sharing and, and watching people do well. Yeah, no, and and uh, yeah, I'm one of the the people who initially learned about IBD and the and the system from you and Chris, and and so like from and many others, we can't thank you enough of uh, you know just helping us throughout that time. So uh, so it, it is great to have you on this episode. So the market is back in an uptrend, 
And so make sure you are doing your work to keep those watch lists fresh. So let's take a quick break. But when we return, we are going to talk about one of the most important aspects when you're trying to figure out what stocks to invest in. That new aspect, the N in CanSlim. We'll be back. I am here with Scott St. Clair. Scott's one of our senior product coaches at MarketSmith. Now, Scott, there are a ton of publicly traded stocks just on the U.S. I think it's over 5,000 stocks. Who has the time to go through all of these stocks and find the very best ones? Yeah, most people don't, right? So what you need is a tool like MarketSmith. We have decades of research on what makes a great winning stock. So we've done all the research for you. So we're going to try to highlight those specific stocks with those great data points. So if you're looking for that next great potential big winner, orange stock ideas button, you just click on it and you've got some of the main reports that we use, including the Growth 250. Yeah, and the Growth 250 is the first list, list that I go through on the weekends. Yeah, it's the most popular one, but there are others. There's the Breaking Out Today, Stocks Near a Pivot, and then the Blue Dot List, right, which is very popular. It's going to show you the stocks with the best relative strength. So we've done a lot of the work for you. What you have to do is review these lists. You're going to come up with some of the best ideas in that current market environment. Perfect. Mark Smith saves you time and makes investment research that much easier. For more information, go to Investors.com slash podcast 2020. Ken Shree is our guest on Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Okay, Ken, let's talk about the N in Can Slim, which stands for new, a new product, a new service. Uh, let's talk about that con this concept and why it's so important to help you kind of decide what stocks to really focus on and, and put some of the others that might look tempting uh, to the side. Well, uh, so so the new is uh, is really what 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 drives earnings and, and sales growth uh, for a company, whether it's a small cap stock or a mid cap or a, or a large cap stock. And in my uh, early years at uh, at IBD, when I had you know opportunities to you know knock on uh, knock on Bill's door and go in and talk to him about the the market and maybe talk to him about individual stocks, you know, he he would not start with the with the with the chart and say, oh look at the you know bullish uh, bullish pattern look at all the accumulation going on in the stock, look at all the funds acquiring shares, or he wouldn't, you know, look, talk about the, their earnings and sales so much. So the first question he'd ask me, what, you know, what is new going on at, uh, at, at the company? And, uh, and that, you know, at the time, it's just like I, I realized that there's a lot of important elements to the to the CanSlim uh, acronym. I mean, current earnings and sales are, are are very important, and institutional sponsorship. But never underestimate the power of uh, of new. I mean, we've we've got 18 stocks in the leaderboard portfolio, and all of these stocks, in, in one sense or another, have got the the new going on. So it's a, either a new product, new service. Sometimes it's new conditions uh, in an industry group. You know, we've got all this 5G work going on and Qualcomm being very well positioned there. So sometimes it's new conditions in an industry, but you know, the new is, uh, is very important. And you know, Bill would always start with, with the new. What is new going on in the company? Perfect. So now do you have any examples of, of some stocks that he, he saw and said, okay, that makes sense. And he, he, he found a way to get into that stock and, and made, it, made it one of his bigger parts of his portfolio? Well, I mean, we were talking about you know Apple back. I think it was in in in, in two thousand eight, and this was right 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 around the time I think when the iPhone was coming out, or they were they yeah. were innovating with a lot of a lot of new products at, at the time. So that was a a stock that I know he did uh, he did uh, he did very well with. Uh, so that one that one really you know. Uh, uh, you know, stands stands out. But when you look at, um, you know, some of his big winners over the year, whether it was, you know, a pick and save, I mean, all of these, the pick and save was adapting to new conditions in an industry, a new product, new service. So uh, when you look at how to make money in stocks and a lot of his big model book winners, they, they all had the new uh, in spades. No, it's true. And, and so I, I pull up Apple here in, in 2008. And so if you are listening to this, you, you can always watch the video version on investors.com slash podcast when you get home. Uh, and and so I, I, I clearly remember at this point because I, I went to the, the master's program at that time. And let's see if I can draw like a little trend line here. Yeah. So um, I went in the master's program. This was during 2008, uh, at, in the midst of when the market really fell apart. Uh, but 
someone asked about, uh, he talked about one stock because we had a brief rally in the spring of 2008. And, and someone asked him, hey, did you buy any stocks? What stocks did you buy? And he said, I bought one stock. I, I bought Apple because it's the clear leader in the market. And, and someone's like, but, but there wasn't really a base there. He's like, well, I bought a bottoming base. Mm -hmm. um, and I just used that little, uh, since it was a leader, he, he's like, he was like, this is the leader. I thought this was the leader in the market. And so I used a smaller consolidation to enter into the stock. Uh, and you know, that stock should do well if this rally was re real. So, so that blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. That point. Yeah. There's no, no doubt. And, uh, it tells you that, uh, you know, just doing technical analysis, a lot, a lot of it is, like I said, if you really believe in a fundamental, uh, story and, and, and the market is in the new stages of an uptrend, I mean, there are always little, uh, variations on, on the rules that you can, that you can make. I mean, this was not, uh, uh, uh it was not a, uh, What's the word? Just not a not a buy. A traditional, that you yeah, not yeah. a traditional uh, buy point for sure. Um, but uh, listen, we 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 talk about bottoming bases um, uh, a lot. I mean, some some bases can form when a when a stock is you know twenty thirty percent off their high. Now they, they some of these will have uh, overhead uh, supply issues to deal with, but you can yeah. see uh, Apple did not have too much uh, problems climbing the the right right side there, and uh, you know lots of accumulation as it worked its way higher towards uh, towards one ninety two. Yeah, and 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 so a lot of times you will be you will discover the new by just using their service, and and there are plenty of people who and and Mike Webster talked talked about always a great story in two thousand four with Apple. He the way he discovered it uh, was because he saw the iPod for the first time. I think someone gave him it as a gift or something, and he couldn't believe how amazing it was. And he looked up the chart, and there's a couple of handle for me. Uh, so. The iPhone, in, in this case, uh, what, what was kind of the catalyst here? Because no one really understood how dramatic a change the iPhone. Everyone thought it was really cool, but just the App Store and all these other things that all these new in, this whole new industry was going to just trans, uh, appear because of the iPhone and the smartphones and all this stuff. Um, but uh, so you always want to kind of keep that in mind. Can I, 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 I don't know about you, but every time I see something really interesting just out and about in a store, uh, or just if I see lines out the door, I'm immediately pulling up the markets make charts on my phone to see if they're publicly traded. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, you know it's, it's it's pretty amazing. You look at the really two two big big winners this year, Zoom Video and then Peloton. You know, not not surprisingly, I mean these stocks they continue to to hold uh, you know nicely near highs uh, amid pretty bullish uh, fundamental stories. I mean, it seems like I've got a head. You and I have headsets on uh, almost uh, every day uh, talking on Zoom, as are a lot of other people in uh, businesses around the country. So, you know, Zoom has just been super impressive to see it hold gains. Uh, like it's doing it has the the new in spades and i mean it's just incredible to see this thing trading uh as tightly as it is uh you know near highs yeah and and i, I think one thing you know uh, that a lot of people uh and it's, it's just normal it's like oh you know but they're just one of these uh this video conferencing aren't there a lot of video conferencing uh, uh companies out there and there are uh there's skype and and cisco has their webex and and mm -hmm. there, there, there are plenty of them out there but yeah. The, the one kind of interesting thing that always stuck out with me with Zoom is it was developed for the cloud, where the, all the others were adapted to the cloud. They, they took the, looked at that cloud technology and said, we're just going to develop it for that to take advantage of this really growing trend. So, so that was new technology developed for a, a, a other new technology. And yeah, so it and, kind of wrote that. Yep. Right. And a new, uh, new technology ideally results in accelerating top line growth and in many cases, ac accelerating earnings growth uh, too. And at least with, uh, you know, the market Smith charts here, you can see that, uh, that acceleration, uh, in recent quarters at, uh, at Zoom from, um, you know, 78% uh, growth to, to 169 top line to 355. So uh, with, with, with true innovation and a true new product and service, you like to see uh, acceleration and growth and uh, you certainly have it with Zoom. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that I try to tell myself is sometimes, yeah, it, it can be obvious. <laughs> so I'm, I'm always worried about, okay, is it too obvious? Does everyone know about it? But yeah, so sometimes it, it still is the, the best best leader, uh, you know, and the, that best leader can continue to outperform. I think it was Peter Lynch who said, and you know, sometimes the best stock that uh, that's out there is the one that you already own. 
and yeah. and you don't want to necessarily overthink it. These great stocks can these great companies doing something so amazing, and with this new technology, they can just keep growing and growing and capturing uh, that market. I mean, you mentioned Peloton, Ken. That that is another great example. And if anyone's watched uh, IBD Live, they probably heard my story about this because I bought one of the Peloton bikes uh, in April or it was actually March. I bought it and they're like, ah, oh, it's going to take a month <laughs> to get it. <laughs> and, and, and so I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, how can it take a month? And so that's when I started looking at the chart. It's like, well, it's, it's kind of setting up here. Let me buy some of the stock. Maybe I can pay off the Peloton bike. Um, yeah. I know it's a, it's a stock you've done exceptionally well with, and this is, this is uh, just a, a, just a, another, uh, frankly, monster, monster stock and, you know, multiple up weeks in a row after a, after a massive uptrend already. But, uh, and I got to tell you, I was, I was skeptical on this one. It just seemed like it, you know, it was a, a fad, but I think uh, this, this uh, work at home uh, phenomenon is, is really not going anywhere. You know, I mean, people, some yeah. people are going to go back, uh, back to work, but COVID it's probably going to be with us for another year or however long. And uh, it seems like demand is probably going to remain, at least that's, that's what the chart is saying for Peloton, that demand is probably going to remain, uh, you know, strong here for, for a while longer. Yeah. And, and you know, I, now I, I also was, I was a little skeptical, but like how far could this really run? So, so I did lighten up a bunch on the stock, um, even though it didn't necessarily break any sell signals, but it was like, you know, let me just lock in uh, a bunch of those gains there. But uh, it, it, one thing is, in, it was interesting that all kind of stuck in my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm captured on, on Peloton. I'm paying a, a, a monthly revenue, a monthly subscription now to them, uh, 40 bucks a month. Uh, to uh, to them, but it is it, I'm working on uh, I'm at least working on a lot more uh, because it's I see it every day and and the all the online kind of classes and things like that. Uh, it really does kind of get you to to exercise uh, a little bit harder too. Well, they yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they they could they monetize. Uh, you you don't have to be a, a Peloton bike user uh, to be in their ecosystem, you yep. know, because they they've got a great app uh, where you can uh, subscribe at a very modest uh, monthly cost and do these in home exercise classes, uh, a variety of different you know yoga or whatever whatever you want to do. So they uh, they are building. Uh, you know, obviously it's not. Apple, it's still a new company, but they are building an ecosystem uh, that is formidable. And uh, uh, the way the, the stock is acting, uh, it seems like this ecosystem has a chance of getting even bigger. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I think the other big thing is if it all of a sudden starts to break down and give major sell signals, I will be out. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, it's a great point because uh, as you know, uh, uh, you know, fundamentals uh, often look the best uh, at or near a stock's uh, top and people say, well, how is a stock reversing hard off its high and why are institutions selling the stock I, when I, uh, amid uh, triple digit earnings and sales growth? And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, again, stop, stocks can, can top when fundamentals look the best. So uh, for those that are, have a, have a nice, uh, nice gain here, obviously that, that 10 week moving average is, uh, is a major line in the sand that it, uh, it found support there uh, recently. So uh, anybody that, you know, again, with a nice gain in the stock, maybe give it, give it some room to the 10 week moving average, a decisive break of that support level, uh, maybe lighten up, uh, if not, you know, sell uh, outright. So you got to follow sell signals. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll, 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 I'll share a couple more like uh, bill stories that I, that I heard after coming into the, into the office. Uh, one was uh, Chipotle in 2010. And and that we I mean we always show show the Chipotle in 2010 breaking out the cup with the handle in the fall which was like everything was perfect yeah the market coming around yeah the the stock uh, coming around it was almost too perfect in in, in that that way but um, well and what, even even Chipotle right now has got has got yeah. a lot of of new going on with uh, you know a new uh, a new uh, CEO you know that, yes. uh, that came over yes. from from Taco Bell so there's a, there's a reason why Chipotle has uh, has emerged as one of the you know the top uh, restaurant stocks because uh, you know Brian uh, Nickel has got such great pedigree he was the you know a big reason behind Taco Bell's uh, success and it's a little ironic going going to Taco Bell to a yeah. you know to a place like Chipotle but uh, yeah. You know, he's got this company, uh, you know, totally focused on uh, digital and digital sales and all the all the restaurant stocks left standing at this point are, are those that made early investments in, in digital strong takeout business. And, you know, Chipotle's right there. 
Oh yeah, no, I, that that is a very very good point. Having the a new CEO can change everything around. We've seen it with Microsoft. We saw it with Apple in two thousand and uh, you know in the early two thousands when Steve Jobs came back too. So so that is very very important. Uh, with the Chipotle in that twenty ten, that was one of Bill's biggest positions there, and and I I remember hearing, you know, his reasoning for it. And he's like, well, Dad it's a new kind of concept where you just walk into the store, you know, it's like kind of a line there and you, you just go through and casual. they assemble it. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, and they had, yeah. And the, and the lines were just out the door it, yeah. and, and, and it was that simple. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like he was going there that, that much. I, I wouldn't know cause I was going there every day. Uh, and so I would have seen him there. Uh, but, uh, he, you want to keep it that simple, just that basic, because the only thing, you know, it's always every cycle, it's the same thing, except that the names are just different. Yeah. And so they just built a better way to for to make, uh, you know, easy uh, to, to grab food uh, quickly and, and a little bit more nutritious and uh, things like that. And, and sometimes, the, yeah, so sometimes it, keeping it, uh, sometimes keeping it simple uh, in the, in the stock market is, uh, is the best way to, to go about it. And even, you know, when you look at our, our market Smith uh, charts here, I mean, it's, it's really easy to get bogged down with a lot of technical indicators, st stochastics and oscillators and all these things. And you know, we've got the 10 week moving average. We've got the 40 week moving average. We've got a relative right. strength line. I mean, keeping it simple uh, when analyzing a chart is also uh, very important. Yeah. And, and that, that I, in many ways, I, I feel like that's one of the most brilliant things that Bill uh, did. Because Bill designed this this uh, daily uh, this it was called Daily Grass. So mm -hmm. This Market Smith chart uh, right. years ago. He put the most relevant stuff and just kept it very very simple, and it works. You know, once you learn how to do it, you really identify uh, the stocks with the biggest potential. Uh, and and the other one other story in 2010 I remember hearing was he was all uh, he was really excited about Lululemon. Mm -hmm. And um, and because I remember, I was like, "Oh, these are really expensive yoga pants. You know how far can they go?" If there is a retailer out there selling something very expensive and they're selling tons of it, pay close attention to the chart. I mean, Peloton's one of those examples too. iPod for Apple, some a Coach, you know. There and, and so those are all kind of uh, little things that Bill uh, would look for to to let them know that hey you know this this might be something that's in in demand and could have they have big margins yeah i mean the new is still going on at lulu we mentioned that that mirror acquisition that they that they made and you know they they also have a, a pretty good uh, men's uh, business it's still a, a small portion of their revenue but uh you know still uh still uh, doing well so i think it's uh, uh it's too early to give up on uh, lulu it's disconcerting to see the selling in the stock after after earnings but this is a uh, you know it's a well run company and uh, they've got a lot of different irons in, in the fire and uh, I think that that mirror acquisition they'll be able to integrate that uh, just fine. Yeah I know I mean that that's their that's their way to get into the connected fitness and maybe even you know manage uh, uh, the, the work from home a little bit better. Right. So uh, companies that are doing something truly new and changing the world are the ones that have tremendous potential in the stock market. So always keep that in mind when you're going through a lot of stocks and seeing a lot of setups. This will help you narrow down the list of the ones to truly focus on. Coming up next, we are going to talk about a few current stocks. Stay tuned. MarketSmith will give you a huge edge in the stock market. Better stocks, bigger profits. MarketSmith is the top research platform for IBD. It's just the best tool for individual stock selection. Everything within MarketSmith is designed to bring those best stocks to the surface. It does a lot of the work for you of filtering down to the potential leaders. It's when you take the training wheels off and you're ready to invest on a more professional level. MarketSmith will help you take control of your investment life. If you want to get serious about investing, start your membership today. We are back with Ken Shreve on Investing with IBD, sponsored by MarketSmith. Okay, Ken, let's get into a few current stocks. And the first one we are going to talk about is American Well Corporation. And the ticker symbol is AMWL. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to pull up the chart so we can take a look at it. Okay, so I have it on the daily charts right here uh, for MarketSmith. And so, Ken, what do you like about this stock? Well, uh, so a recent uh, IPO came public at uh, $18 a, a share, more, a great underwriter, uh, Morgan Stanley. And uh, this, you know, company is right in the, the uh, sweet 
spot telehealth uh, telemedicine obviously uh you know teledoc and lavongo or have gotten a lot of the headlines this year they're they're big merger but uh you know telehealth is uh really a big deal and it's uh you know it's not going anywhere it's probably going to gain even more uh traction so we added uh amwell uh to leaderboard on uh, on monday when it broke out of a, a classic ipo base so ipo bases can be short this was obviously a, a short base it was what it maybe eight eight days, something like that, but a yeah, yeah. Really, um, you know, really solid breakout. And then it, it, it uh, you know, good close on, on Monday, closed in the upper half, uh, good volume. And then we saw, you know, strong volume on Tuesday and uh, Wednesday, closed near its low on, um, on Tuesday, made another nice gain uh, uh, on Wednesday, closed near its low again. But again, you know, you talk about looking at a weekly chart to kind of smooth out, uh, you know, day-to-day -day volatility, and you got a really bullish looking uh, weekly chart for, for Amwell. So we feel like our 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 buy was uh, right here, and look forward to holding on to this for uh, for a period of time. Yeah. So so for those of you who are listening out there, you, you want to you know take take some time, look at the look at the fundamentals in the story, put it on a watch list because it now chances are after it emerged out of that uh, small IPO base, uh, it's probably gonna who knows how far it's gonna run now, but. It's gonna. There's gonna come a point where it's gonna take some time off and build a more traditional base, or maybe put it three weeks tight, or or some of our more classic entry points, uh, so so you can get into it. Because uh, if it's a great great company, you know the the move is not over here. Yeah, you don't you don't want to chase it up here. It is uh, it is pretty far extended, but uh, also love the accelerating uh, sales sales growth here. Yeah. Uh, you can see, I mean, you've got what uh, three quarters in a row of uh, of accelerating revenue, and that is meaningful. Uh, that is meaningful acceleration. So um, you know, not uh, not profitable yet, but a, a lot of cases with these IPOs, it's uh, in fact we've seen you know three or four or five of them in recent days that uh, are not profitable, but they've got that that big revenue growth and you think over time that that's going to translate into into uh, earnings growth and that'll happen with uh, with Amwell but uh, this is just a classic uh, IPO base uh, uh, breakout with accelerating sales growth and uh, companies in that in that just really sweet industry of uh, telehealth uh, services yeah no it, and and a lot of times you do want to keep a, and here's your new right yeah yep. a lot of times you, you want to keep an eye on some of these stocks that are part of a a larger new trend because there there are plenty of times where a number of these companies can do very very well when that trend is just dominating everything um so so that's american wall corporation ticker symbol a m w l now the the next stock is axonic modulation tech and that ticker symbol is AXNX. And I pulled it up here on the weekly chart. And so, Ken, what do you like about this one? Well, this was another another classic uh, breakout. We added uh, Axonix uh, on uh, September twenty uh, ninth when it broke out over that forty six forty six twenty five buy point. Uh, the new uh, going on here is a very uh, innovative uh, treatment uh, for people that suffer from uh, incontinence, uh, overactive bladders, uh, uh, things of that uh, nature. They basically uh, provide electrical uh, stimulation therapy. Now, what's really interesting here is that in 2019, this company did a total of $14 million in sales, okay? Uh, it's not a lot of sales for a publicly traded company. This is a small cap stock, but this year, after the first two quarters of 2020, they've already done 46 and a quarter million wow. uh, sales. So 46 million versus uh, 14 million, and we still have two quarters uh, to go uh, this year. So uh, this is, um, you know, again, we love the love the new here, like the, the relative strength line in uh, new high ground. It is a speculative, a uh, little more speculative because it's, uh, you know, market cap of around what, two, two billion, I think, something like that. Yeah, just under. Yeah, it's close to two billion. Yeah, yeah. just under uh, uh, two billion. But, um, you know, it's uh, just right now still being discovered by uh, some pretty, uh, you know, pretty top uh, fund um, fund manager. So a um, lot to like here. A lot of positives uh, far outweigh the negatives. Yeah. And, and I think that even on just a technical basis or just a trading basis, uh, th this stock took a around a year and a half off, built a really kind of large consolidation. I mean, and now it's into all time highs. Can you mention overhead supply before? 
there's no overhead supply now. It worked all the way through that. And a lot of times once you get into those all time highs, it can even give a little bit more power for the these stocks to move. Yeah. In fact, if we could look at the daily chart for Exonix uh, too, because on the weekly chart, I love how it's it's holding gains uh, from from last week. And there was, uh, you know, a, it looks like a you know four day uh, four day pullback. It was fairly well contained though. Uh, during that four day pullback, it held above the buy point. There wasn't a lot of volume uh, behind the declines, especially the 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 last three days where volume completely dried up. Uh, and then today, you had a nice uh, reversal higher in uh, in heavy volume. So the stock closed at forty eight seventy. It's probably pretty close right now to the to, to the top of that 5% uh, uh, buy zone. My math is not uh, good enough to calculate in my head, but it's probably, <laughs> it's uh, right around that, uh, you know, probably 5% past that 46.25. Uh, Actually, it, it looks like 6% according okay. to Panerick. So it's like just a little bit above it now. A little bit above it. Yeah. So, uh, but I just, I really thought the price action today was, uh, was, was great. And, uh, you know, we added it on, on the breakout and after four straight declines, it was great to see an upside uh, reversal in higher volume today. Yeah, yeah. So so that's axonic modulation tech, ticker symbol AXNX, yet another new company that's probably not on most people's radar. It's, it's really not even on mine. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so so you definitely want to take a look at that. Now, uh, we're not, we're, we're going to all recognize this next symbol and stock and company. Uh, this is Nike. But uh, Ken, why, why are you putting this on here? These guys have been around for a long time. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the last time uh, if we've ever had a Dow component on, uh, on on leaderboard. I don't think I don't think we have, but uh, we just really like the look of this uh, breakout all the way back on August uh, 10th. I mean, yeah. it was just uh, it was just classic. There was heavy volume, and then in the days uh, following the breakout, it just kind of held uh, held tight, and then just continued on a a, a nice uh, a nice uptrend. And then, of course, you had a a bullish uh, gap up on on the company's uh, latest earnings report and uh you know dave and i were you know uh uh, pounding the table on, on Nike at the time because we're very familiar with John uh, Donahue who, who came over from uh, ServiceNow um, and he was brought on to, to Nike to, to really you know uh, juice up the company's digital sales and uh, they've, they've basically hit a, a home run since he's been on the job there basically since the, the start of the year so uh, there's a lot of a lot of new going on at uh, at, uh, at Nike I think their digital sales are something close to 40%, 35, 40% of total revenue. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And they, and they had wanted to achieve that like in 2024, I think it was, that was the company's stated goal. So they hit that already in 2021 or, or 2020. So um, yeah, I just really like what's going on at, uh, at Nike. And just like uh, we talked about the new, uh, relatively new CEO at uh, Chipotle, got a new CEO at, uh, at Nike that's uh, just doing a, doing a fantastic job. Yeah. And, and I think one catalyst here, and this gets to the, the, the digital sales, uh, it they all, they, it seems like Nike releases a lot of these special editions, so like the Michael Jordan special edition. I think there was like a North Carolina one, which looked really cool, uh, the Tar Heels version. Uh, and so they always have these, uh, maybe every quarter they're coming out with some kind of special edition, and they sell out instantly. Yeah. The, these, uh, these, and so they, they, there's a lot of buzz that's going on there. And then those sneakers are traded on – other markets and and the prices can just go through the roof. I mean, they're 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 traded like stocks. Uh, yeah. so these sneakers. There, there's this whole underground kind of. It might not even be underground anymore. It's like it's really mainstream. But um, but people are making a lot of money just uh, finding these really in demand sneakers and uh, selling them. Um, for, for uh, a pretty nice gain. And they have uh, they have another brand, a very popular brand that uh, some people don't even know is owned by Nike, but Converse is uh, oh, is wow. still is still uh, doing doing very uh, doing very well for them. They always seem to be talking about Converse in their uh, conference call. So uh, yeah, this is probably the first uh, first time we've ever had a Dow component on uh, on leaderboard, but it's obviously treated us uh, uh, very very well. It's uh, it's a bit extended up here, and um, uh, so maybe you know we'll. Let's wait for another uh, base to form. Uh, we we want to add to the position at some point, but we can't do it right now because um, it's just a, it's just a, a extended. Yeah, and and sometimes it's really nice to have a, a stock like this, uh, a larger stock, a bigger brand name, something that you can really understand. Uh, and and it just it just crawls up. It's it's doing just kind of the the little uh, inching up 
uh, type of uh, action right here, which which are, is an indication of just subtle accumulation going on. But it's it's nice to have that in your portfolio because it's not as volatile as some of these other stocks uh, that that can really really uh, go, go all over the place. So some of these days, it's amazing yeah. at how far my uh, portfolio can drop or how fast it can drop since everything's so tied together. Yeah, exactly. So having a having a good liquid. Uh, Blue chip, and we've we've got a lot of mega caps uh, in the in the leaderboard uh, portfolio. Uh, you know, Adobe uh, comes to mind. Uh, Service Now, you know, so we we're not averse to large cap uh, stocks at all, especially if there's a, a growth story, and that's a, a common bond among all leaderboard stocks is they've got exceptional fundamentals and they're um, you know they're industry group uh, leaders, and most if not all have uh, you know have that uh, have that new going on. And and let's end with one more stock. And this is definitely has something new going on here. This is Beyond Meat, uh, ticker symbol B Y N D. And uh, you know, now this is a, this is a, a larger and growing trend that's going out there. And uh, it seems like these guys are one of the bigger brand names. Uh, and they they went on a, a, a a really strong run at the beginning of 2019 when they they came out public and then it, it completely corrected now it's formed the base it's it's crawling higher it's it has relative strength and it's almost at all-time highs yeah you can see a, a lot of choppy price action in this stock in uh in in 2019 kind of wide and loose all over the place but the but the latest cup base that it broke out of was really well formed it had good uh, good symmetry we actually added beyond meat the same day we added uh, axonix ax and x on on september 29th uh, they both broke out on the on the same day and you can see the uh, beyond meats uh, breakout has performed uh, very well several up weeks in a row um and you know the most recent news here that we've uh, you know we talked about on IBD Live is that they you know significantly expanded their distribution agreement with uh, with Walmart. Uh, they were in 800 stores, and and that's going to expand to to 2,400. So uh, I have not tried myself a Beyond Meat uh, burger yet, but uh, you know plenty of people that have, and I think the the general consensus is, uh, well, you know if you smother it with ketchup, onions, and mustard, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> I've tr I've tried it. They're getting closer. They're, yeah. They're, 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 yeah, they're getting closer. It's not completely there. And I think I've said this on IBD Live. I, I feel like the uh, the Impossible Burger, which uh, is another one that I think actually might be coming out public in, in maybe the next year or so. I think that's even closer. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 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 these things are they're getting closer and closer, and there are more and more people, especially in the younger crowd that they're, they're trying to stay away from the, the real burgers and, and things like that. So these are alternatives. And a lot of times new products, new companies rise when you have another generation, especially a large generation like the millennials coming in and that's what they like. And also then the sales and the, and the money is going to go towards those companies. Yeah, I mean, listen, I I will try one uh, at, at some point, and who knows, maybe I'll be impressed. But there's, uh, you know, again, just looking at uh, price and and volume and fund sponsorship, and look at the annual earnings estimates here. I mean, pretty pretty impressive here. Um, they yep. just recently turned uh, profitable. They're going to earn seven cents uh, this year, and then that's going to jump to, you know, fifty nine fifty nine percent. I don't I don't know if that is including uh, perhaps increased business with. Um, uh, with with Walmart, uh, I don't know if that estimate is, includes that, but obviously uh, there's a, a very compelling growth story here. Yeah, and and a lot of times, what what I'm noticing, and I'm sure Ken, you've noticed this too, is you know, Wall Street is behind the stories, right? Some of these companies are growing so fast that it's it's impossible for even the smartest people to truly understand what is going on here, and and so those estimates will always just naturally be a little bit more conservative. They're going to, analysts are naturally going to be more conservative anyways. Right, right. Um, but uh, so these, these stocks, you'll see that over all, all the time. They're growing so fast that Wall Street can't catch up to it. And so not only are funds trying to buy more, now analysts are starting to raise their price targets too. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh... 
you know, it's one of the great things about the stock market. And I know Bill would always talk about this at, at workshops and is uh, the amount of innovation uh, that goes on in the, in the U.S. economy and the number of companies that come public uh, every year. I know you, uh, Scott St. Clair was on your show recently. You were talking about the snow, the snowflake uh, yeah. IPO. I mean, there's a yep. chance that that could form a new IPO base, but all these companies coming po uh, public with new products, new services, and then, you know, uh, established companies like Beyond Meat and, you know, Chipotle and uh, there's, there's just new going on uh, all over the place and it really can present some uh, some profitable uh, investing opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so definitely the, the, the sooner everyone realizes that uh, and you make that a habit, if you see something new and interesting, take a look at a, a Mark Smith chart, take investigate it because you may have a really profitable idea on your hands. Absolutely. So there are a few ideas worth keeping on your watch list. Thanks, Ken, for joining us today. Hey, uh, great to be on with you, Arush. I uh, really appreciate it. Next week, we will have David Barst on the show. David is the founder and CEO of Xout Capital. So that's it for this week on Investing with IBD. I'm Arusha Paris, and thanks for listening. And for this week's Nilton Charts, make sure to go to Investors.com slash podcast where you'll find details for each episode in the podcast episode section. And make sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate it. You can also send us your questions and comments to investingpodcast at investors.com. We would love to hear from you and may use your comments on an upcoming episode. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.